George Michalowski with Pittsburgh Sports Now. And I'm Jamarius Burton. Welcome to the Just Buckets Podcast. Hi, I'm Pete Strobel, president of the Scoring Factory. Here, we make you better. Here is where you work on your weaknesses. This is the place you come to work on the fundamentals that are going to take you to the next level. We love to push players. We love to teach players. We've worked with a lot of very talented players, and we want your son or daughter to come in next. I am Jamarius Burton, and here at the Scoring Factory in Pittsburgh, PA, you can get better. Here, we focus on player development, skill, and overall getting better is done here. Details are not missed with Pete Strobel and the Scoring Factory. Welcome back to the Just Buckets podcast. I am Jamarius Burton. I'm George Michalowski, your co-host here for episode two. Uh, let's get right into it, JB. Let's go. Yes, today we'll be introducing a special guest, Mr. Greg Elliott, transfer from Marquette. Um, welcome on. Yeah, welcome Appreciate on, Greg. Appreciate you for having me, guy. Yes, sir. So, um, Greg, you know, obviously Detroit native, uh, played four years at Marquette, uh, now entering your first year at Pitt. Just to start us off, how's everything going so far here at Pitt? Um, I say it's been good so far, uh, you know, getting used to being in a new city, um, being around new guys, but it's all been good because everybody been welcoming me with open arms, so it's been fun. Yeah, before we, um, you know, dive deeper into the season, you know, leading up to the season, can you tell us a little bit about your childhood, you know, growing up in Detroit, you know, family dynamic and everything like that? All right, so for me, it was, I had both of my parents growing up, um, my mom, my dad, and then in our household, it was my little sister mm -hmm. and my older brother. So me, I got three older brothers. So I got a, one named Jeremy. He's older than me. My brother Delonte, that's the one that lived in the house with me. Uh, yeah. And I got one that's under him. His name DeLorean. Mm -hmm. um, so we grew up, you know, playing sports. Um, I started playing in, like, third grade. Um, and then from there, it just took off. So, like, most people don't know. My mom didn't want, like, she wasn't going to let me try out mm -hmm. in the third grade because I had, like, a C minus. So, I was late to tryouts. Um, but I ended up making a team and, and just started rolling from there. But that was my family dynamic growing up. Yeah. When you, um you know, speak about, you know, having older brothers, for me, I had older sisters. So, how was that dynamic, you know, having older brothers? Like, did they push you, you know, did they introduce you to the game? Like, you know, how was that? Um, for me, it was different because my older brothers didn't play basketball. Mm -hmm. So, like, they were just, like, teaching me life stuff. Um, like, you know, like, you know, you can make money doing this, but it's what other ways that's illegal that you shouldn't do. You know? Right, right. They were showing me both ways of, you know, outside of sports. So, like, my dad was the one that really got me into basketball. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, um, it was just, like, something to take away, like, past time, really, at first, like, so I wouldn't get in trouble doing whatever it was to do outside of basketball. I started to play basketball to take away time, so that's what it was. So your older brothers didn't hoop, but you did, and your younger sister did. Yeah. Um, Gabby, correct? Mm -hmm. She's a hooper now still, right? Yep. Tell me about her basketball career growing up playing against her. Um, so my little sister, um, so we, for me and her, we both started in a church league. Um, so she started off the first year as a cheerleader, mm. and she felt like this. These her exact words. So she was like, "I wasn't getting enough attention, you know, because <laughs> you got to think like cheerleaders only get to go, you know, timeouts or halftime, and in the church league, wasn't no timeout, so they wouldn't get to go on. They just had halftime, and she felt like that wasn't enough time for her, you yeah. know, to get her shine on. So. Like that next year, she was like, I want to play basketball. So she decided to play. And then it felt good for me knowing, like, I had I played a part in my little sister wanting to play basketball. And then from there, I could see, like, she really started to love the game. So the more she started to love the game, it made, it made it feel better for me because I got to teach her more about what I was knowing and learning in the game as well. Yeah, um... That's crazy that you know speak about you and your sister's dynamic. It was kind of you know the same way for me, but you know instead of you know you teaching her the game, my sisters was teaching me the game because they're older than me. 
But um, you know, how did y'all have any like rivalries growing up? Like you know, shoot shooting drills. Like you know, like you know, some things that y'all would do. Um, really, we just played one on one a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, so like we would play one on one, but it came with like rules. So, what was like, the rules? So like I couldn't post up. <laughs> um, I couldn't get the ball first, or like if I'm up a certain amount, I can't go right no more. Oh, uh, so, okay. a whole bunch of crazy like stipulations. So like. So I would make sure I told her, like, you know if you win, it don't count. Like, you, mm. just, you just put all these stipulations on. But, but, but did that make you a better player, though? Yeah, it definitely made me a better player. Um, like, when I sit back and look at it now, I'd be like, man, like, my little sister actually is the reason that my game is where it is today. Mm -hmm. But it's it's real good. And, like, at the same time, it's like she don't really get – she don't understand that because at the end of the day I am older than her. So right. she wouldn't look at it as, like, oh, I helped my brother get to where he did. But she really has in a lot of ways. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, you know, you're growing up, you're hooping all the time with your sister, you know, your dad's teaching you the game. Uh, living in Detroit, you know, were you a big Detroit sports fan growing up? Pistons, Tigers, Lions, you know, what teams did you like to, to follow when you were a kid? So I, I follow all the sports in Detroit. Um, like, I know we're not that good as of now, but I follow them all. Okay, and are there any Pistons players specifically, like on the basketball side that – you know, you looked up to when you were a kid or that were your favorite players when you were a kid? Um, growing up, my favorite player was, like, Rip Hamilton. I like Ben Wallace. But I really tried to model my game after Rip Hamilton, like, when I was first starting. Okay. And, um, you know, are, are there any players nowadays that, uh, that are in the NBA now? I know you're a big NBA fan. Um, I know Rip's, you know, time has come. But uh, are there any players now that you really look up to a lot and, and try to take things from their game? Um. Me, personally, I would probably say, like, C.J. McCollum. Like, I, I know I don't have the ball in my hand as much as he do, mm -hmm. but, like, when I do get the ball, I try and be as efficient as I can, like he yeah. does with the ball. Because that's the one thing I do like watching about his game is how efficient he is with the way he moves. So I try and put that in my game. I got you. So uh, I want to get into your high school career now. So you're okay. growing up, you're hooping. We established all that. You go into high school and, you know, I guess fast forward – to the later stages of your high school career. You know, you averaged over 28 points a game, I read, as a senior, dropped 40-plus points three times as a senior, one of them in front of Tom Izzo, Michigan State, you know, the biggest-named coach, you know, in that state that you grew up in. Tell me about your, you know, high school basketball career and when it really started to take off. So, for me, like you said, it didn't take off until the latter end, so 11th, 12th grade. So, it started 11th grade. Um, I would say it took off for me when I started to dunk, mm, okay. I would say, because it kind of, like, opened my game up. Um, so, yeah, 11th grade when I started to dunk, I would probably say it's what changed it. Um, I mean, I honestly saw – me personally, I didn't know nothing about, like, scholarships, mm -hmm. none of that. I just like – I, like you said, I just play basketball to play basketball. So the, the better I got at it, like, I learned, like, I can get a scholarship and go to college with this. So, like, I want to say – it's weird, like, so I, I did watch the first episode. But I think my first scholarship was Cleveland State, too. Like, oh, just like John. You and John, yeah. yeah. I think that oh, was that's my, wild. I think that was my first offer for real. So, But it's different, like, he was from there. But I, I used to go up there all the time mm -hmm. for, like, team camps and stuff like that. So I would say my first offer came from there. And then, like, I just gradually got better at the game of basketball. I started off with, you know, like, at ninth and 10th grade, I, I just could do all the little stuff. I could rebound. I would get on the floor for loose balls, stuff like that. So, like, once I got the skill, like, mm -hmm. once the skill came along with it is when I got better and better. But I would say I never – I didn't reach, like, the 28 points a game until senior year for sure. Senior year is when I got to do more. I, I could, It was my team at that time. Like, mm -hmm. it was – if if Greg don't do well, we might not win. So, yeah. I knew I had that pressure on me, and I, I took it and used it. And – I got to where I am now. Definitely. So, you know, speak about your recruiting process. Like George said, you had a lot of, you know, high majors looking after you. You know, how was it down the end where you, you know, ultimately decided to go to Marquette? Um, for me, it came down to my last three was Providence, Michigan State, Marquette. Um, it was like it got crazy at a time. Um, with Michigan State, I would say. They they was the school that came in last, like mm -hmm. at the tail end for real, and it was like it was crazy because it's like you know Izzo calling your phone. That's, yeah. that's weird. Mm -hmm. Like you know, 
that's a Hall of Fame coach, and he calling your phone because he wants you to come be a part with he, you know, his program. So it was crazy for me. Um, it was tough, you know, to tell Izzo, like, you know, I, I won't be attending your school. Um, and then, like, with Providence, it was just far. I'm going to be honest with you. If if Providence was, God, it's like 13 hours for real, yeah. let it have at least been six, seven, I went to Providence mm -hmm. without hesitation. Um, like, it just felt like the right fit for me. Um, Coach Ed Cooley, he's probably one of the best guys I've ever been around. Mm -hmm. So, like, he still talks to my dad to this day. Like, so I feel like if Providence wasn't as far, I would have went there. And then me choosing Marquette, it was a lot that went into it. Um, one of the assistant coaches, he, like, built a great relationship with me in the recruiting process that made it feel like I couldn't go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that um, – Jamal Kane, that's like, he was my best friend since like sixth, seventh grade. So the fact that he was, he got, he actually like got the, he went to Marquette too. So we always had talked about it. Like, you know, like we gonna, we gonna go to college together one yeah. day, bro. Like <laughs> we just always said it to each other and mm -hmm. then it actually happened. So like when we got that chance, it was like something we really couldn't pass up. Definitely. So Jamal, you know, he's with the Heat right now, correct? Yeah. So Jamal, I saw him play at Oakland. Uh, I think last season, two seasons ago, uh, played at Marquette before that. But, yeah, he's up in the NBA preseason right now, dropped 15 and 11. Yeah. Uh, talk about your relationship with Jamal. Like, did you talk to him after that game? Yeah, definitely talked to him after the game. Uh, it's like, you know, our relationship has been pretty – it grew since seventh grade. Um, started off at, at AAU. Like, you got to think, like, that's one person I can say I've seen grow to the max, like. It started in seventh grade to not see him in the NBA. It's crazy. Um, like, I watched him develop. He watched me develop. It's been, you know, highs, lows, and it's been the, it's been good because we've been through all that together. You know, the highs of college basketball, the lows of college basketball. It was good to go through that with somebody, especially somebody that I knew all my life. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I get to see him do as well as he's doing right now is great to me, and it's showing me that it's very reachable. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we fast forward. You talked about your experience at Marquette. You you know, you had a few good years there. Tell us about, you know, the, the transfer process, you know, hitting the portal and, you know, seeing, you know, what options was out there for you. Um, I would say it all started because I had a successful year at Marquette my last year uh, shooting a basketball. Um, so, like, I honestly, when I did – hit the portal, mm -hmm. I didn't expect it to blow up like it did, I'm going to be honest. Um, I was expecting, like, to go maybe, like, you know, mid-major mm -hmm. or something to where I could just, you know, get the – show off my game a little bit more. Yeah. So that's what I was expecting when, that, when I first called my high school coach and told him what my plans was. So he was like, all right, we can do this. And then he told me, like, right after, it was like, 30, 40 minutes, he said his phone was blowing up crazy. Yeah. I was like, what you mean? He was like, everybody wants to talk to you. Like, everybody wants you to, you know, come see what they working with at their university. And I was like, I mean, we can, we can talk to everybody, you know, listen, see what everybody talking about, but we're going to, you know, decipher and see what's best fit for me. Right, right. And mm -hmm. that's how I ended up with Pitt, I guess. Yeah. Um, so really how, how Pitt came about um, was, so Coach Jake Pursuti, he was at uh, Marquette with me. Mm -hmm. He was assistant coach. So not last year, we had Shaka. So the year before that, he was yeah. one of our assistant coaches. Um, so he had, like, he texted me and was like, he just asked me, like, what I, what I was looking for in my next spot. Mm -hmm. And I told him. And he was like, I think I got the perfect situation for you. But it's funny, though, because I'm going to be honest, I didn't respond. Mm. So he texted me. I I saw it, but I didn't respond. Jake, I love you, though. <laughs> yeah, you got to get him to listen yeah, to that. I love you. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I definitely didn't so, respond. So what was the shift? Uh, what made you My high school coach called oh, me. Oh, okay. So, so did he reach out to so your he high called, school? Oh, he okay. Called, okay. Jake called my high school coach uh -huh. and was like, we got a good situation for Greg. Mm -hmm. And then once my high school coach called me. It was over. Yeah, I was like, all right, I'll listen now. Because like, mm -hmm. if you know me, like, I, I can come to a decision on my own. But if my high school coach says something, 
I'm gonna listen a little harder. Okay. So he he put it in my ear. Like I I seen the text, but mm-hmm. it was like, you know. And then he once he put it on the table and was like, this what this what can work out for you. It's the best situation of all that's been calling. Yeah. And I knew somebody there, and it was you know I'm looking for something that's gonna be familiar to yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. Especially, Especially last year. Yeah, right, that's what I'm saying. So like, it's my last one. So I want to go somewhere where I'm familiar with at least somebody that's you know, in the in the higher ups. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what really did it. Hey, what do you recommend on the menu? Um, as the top gunner. So um, speak about speak about you know your experience you know us having that first week of practice underneath our belt, and what you're looking forward to um, in the season coming up. Um, I would say I'm super excited about the season. I want to uh, me personally, I want to get pit basketball back to where it's supposed to be. Right to that you know getting to the tournament, making runs in the ACC tournament. You know I feel like that's something that Pittsburgh has been needing for a while now, right, right. especially off like me getting here and talking to people from here, mm-hmm. you know, like I get an Uber ride, you know, and they yeah. telling me like, oh, you play for Pitt, mm-hmm. we need y'all to be good. Like, yeah. that's not something I'm, I'm used to, you and know. taking like, lightly. Yeah, it's like you, they don't, like, they think Pitt basketball should be good and it should be. And they really feel like it's something that it, it hasn't happened. So you can tell that's hurting them for real. Mm-hmm. And it would feel good for me personally uh, you know, help get them back where they want to be. So I saw the other day on the Pitt basketball Twitter page, you know, there was a there was a play uh, where JB had the ball in transition, driving down the middle of the floor, finds Greg in the corner, knocks down a three. Um, I think you tweeted about it too, Greg. But JB, I want to hear your perspective. You know, when you're flying down the court, uh, you know, handling the ball like you do best, you know, in transition, and you see a shooter, you have a shooter like Greg on your team right, that's right. running down the wing. Take me through that thought process. Are you looking for him the whole time down, mm-hmm. or are you are you trying to play off of him? You know, take the ball to the rack. How does that go through your head? Yeah, um, for me, I'm just coming down the court aggressive. You know, you know, just reading the defense at the time, and I know, you know, if he's running down the floor, he gets to that corner. If his man bite, you know, that's an opportunity for us to get a shot, and we have a you know high level shooter. So for me. It's just about reading the defense and taking what they, you know, what they give me. So I'm coming down the floor. If his man bites, if they're not there, you know, respecting his capabilities, then I'm going to kick it to him, you know. So for me, it's being aggressive first, you know, always looking for myself first. You know, you got to do that to, you know, bring the defense. So for me, I'm coming down to transition, you know, with that in mind. And then, you know, if they bite, I'm going to always kick it to the open man. Right. So um, I want to get into, you know, wrapping this show up, but we want to really – um, talk to Greg, you know, big NBA fan, both of you guys, mm-hmm. about something that just happened recently that just came out. We're talking about Draymond Green, uh, Warriors, you know, <laughs> punched Jordan Poole, you know, <laughs> leaked video from TMZ. I know you guys both have thoughts on it. I'm going to give you three options. Okay. okay. If you're the Warriors, are you suspending Draymond? Are you trading Draymond? Are you finding Draymond? Let's hear it, Greg. Um, me personally, I would go with trade him. Because it's like, <laughs> it's no way the team going to function correctly <laughs> after that. Like, you got to think about it. They're getting ready for ring night. How you going to want your ring after you just got punched by this man? Mm. Couldn't do it. For me, for me, I'm going to say um, they're going to find him. You know, I'm sad. I thought, that you, were, I thought you were going to suspend him. No, actually, I'm going to say they'll suspend him. Okay, I, there I'm you say, go. I'm, I'm going to say they'll suspend him. Why? Because I feel like... Um, I'm sad that the video got out. First of all, yeah. you know, I feel How like I feel like it's happen. family business. But because they're a family, you know, they got that history of winning together. 
you know what I'm saying, they'll suspend him, you know, to teach him a lesson, you know, understanding that, you know what I'm saying, as family, you can sit down and discuss it. You don't necessarily got to get, you know, to, you know, fist throwing at times. But I feel like they'll probably find him and then, you know, keep it pushing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it'll be a fine. I think it could be a suspension. Or a suspension, but, yeah, a suspension. But nothing, I mean, I don't think it'll be anything crazy. I don't think they'll trade him. I feel like they might find they and suspend him. him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in a combination of both. They're going to find and suspend him, um, you know, to set the example. But I feel like, you know, they're a family and they're going to keep it pushing. I got you. Yeah, so, Greg, you know, a little bit about yourself off the court. You know, what does a day in the life of Greg Elliott look like, you know, let's say after practice? Um, it really depends. Uh, depends on the day. So, if we pick a day, I can tell you. So, like, if it's Thursday, um, I st- so it's football long, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to go watch football. Uh, depends. Like, I, I like to watch. Like, I don't like to – I like to be alone, but, like, my teammates want to do something like we can watch we can watch the game together that's cool mm-hmm. um I like to play the game too so like but me I won't sit and play by myself though like oh. it, it's weird to me like it get boring fast so like I call John or somebody like mm-hmm. yo you trying to play Fortnite or something <laughs> I I do that a lot honestly so so I like to play the game get some pizza but most of the time I'm just chilling um, one more, you know, off the court question before we get off. Um, what piece of advice would you give a younger, you know, player out there that's, you know, um, going through the recruitment process, maybe in high school, you know, that's eager, you know, that want to play at this level, but you know, want to make sure they get it right? Um, the first thing I would say is trust your work. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if you're putting the work in, you should always trust it. Um, and then I would say, listen to those that's in your circle. Um, because like, no matter what, I feel like if they in your circle and they really there for you, they're going to tell you the only, only things that's going to help you. No matter if it's good, bad, no matter, no matter how it feel to you at that time, they're only telling you this because they love you and want to see you be better and be, and succeed. So I would say, listen to the people in your circle. Definitely. Um, and before we get off the Just Buckets podcast, we appreciate you, Greg, for coming on. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Um, we're going to have George, you know, announce a Gussie's giveaway that we have um, coming up on our next show. Yeah, so thank you all for tuning in. Just like JB said, thanks, Greg, for coming on the show. Really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, so we partnered with Gussie's Bagels in Oakland, right on Fifth Avenue, uh, right in the heart of Pitt's campus, really, you know. Yep, 3606 Fifth Ave. 3606, best bagels in town uh, in Pittsburgh. So. Uh, we're going to be giving away Gussie's gift cards throughout the entirety of the show. Yep. Um, you know, from now till the end of the season, this first giveaway, listen up. So all you listeners, Pitt fans, Pitt students, anyone, um, you know, watch this show. You know, you're at this point right now. And all we need you to do is comment in the YouTube comments your favorite Pitt basketball memory or your favorite Pitt basketball player. By doing that, you'll enter the giveaway, you know, next episode, live on the air. JB and I will pick out the winner uh, out of a hat, out of a bucket, and uh, you'll win some, uh, some Gussie's credit. So uh, be sure to tune into the next episode to, to see if you've won. And uh, definitely make sure to like, subscribe, comment below your favorite pit basketball memory. Yep, and um, before, you for, before we get off, um, don't forget to visit the jamarisburton.com, and you can see our schedule on there so you won't miss a game. And also have a um, promo for the Legends Classic, you know, our tournament playing Michigan, VCU, and I think Arizona State is there. A lot of great competition. You can get 10% off your tickets if you use the code BURTON. Um, so, yes, go to jamarisburton.com, click the link, and we appreciate you coming on. Thank you all for tuning in. One last shout-out to producer Sydney for cooking this all up. Let's give Sydney a big round of applause here. So thank you, guys. Thank you.